I'm going to jump straight in and say this is how you do it. If you stick the urine testing strip into there, leave it for a few seconds and take it out, this will take about up to two minutes to develop all the results. I will put an entry on my blog which I will link to in the description that will show you what each of the things will do. Now I'm going to have to wait about 30 seconds and I've just realised I've lost, not used my timer so I'm going to have to talk about other things. First of all, a warning. None of this is to replace the attention of a healthcare professional. This is just to show you how to do it and how to demonstrate. This is a demonstration of kidney functions and what urinalysis actually shows you. Remember the blog entry. The kidney functions are basically the reabsorption of water, the removal of waste products, the balance of electrolytes and pH, and the secretion of various hormones, which are mainly to do with blood pressure. Now, I think it's starting to develop now. So what you do with that is you compare it to the thing on here. Now that is what I'm gonna put on the blog entry. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna run through the different results and what they mean. First of all, leukocytes are negative. That means I don't have an infection. Secondly, nitrite, which is to do with bacteria living in the urine and tells you which kind of bacteria might be in there. Also negative. Next one, urobilinogen is normal. Again, urobilinogen is a bile pigment. It's secreted by, it's what makes urine yellow eventually. Urobilin is what makes it yellow. Urobilinogen is what is in there before it's gone yellow. And it's actually a bile pigment secreted by the gallbladder, which is then processed by the liver, that goes into the bloodstream and then comes out making the urine yellow. That's why it's yellow. The next one along is protein. Why might you have protein in your urine? Well, the main reason people have protein in their urine actually is that they haven't taken a midstream sample. What you should do when you take a sample is you should take it first thing in the morning, which is what this is, you should wait until you've started urinating and then fill it up in the middle, then take it away before you've finished. And protein might indicate, for example, stuff in vaginal mucus, semen, and that kind of thing, but also may represent either leukocytes, white blood cells, which are the cells that kill bacteria, or bacteria themselves, or it may indicate that your kidneys are leaking protein from your bloodstream. If that happens, you're likely to get puffy face and puffy ankles and that sort of thing, although there may be many other causes of that. So that's protein. Next one along is pH. pH is quite important because one of the main functions of the kidneys is to excrete hydrogen and hydroxide ions in order to balance your pH. So that will tell you what's going on. And the lungs are also part of that. And my current pH is 5.0. So there you go. That's sort of slightly acidic. Uh, and the lungs will be also balancing that as well. If that goes off, it means your kidneys are not doing that job properly or that you have a major problem with your pH situation. Okay, next one along is blood. Now, some people naturally have blood in their urine and it's not a problem. Other people have blood in their urine because of trauma, i.e. mechanical damage, and other people have blood in their urine because there is injury to their kidneys in another way. Blood in the urine, actually, that can form the nucleus for the formation of kidney stones, so it needs to be watched, although it can be normal. Next one along is specific gravity. Now, my specific gravity is 1.015. Now, 1.015 is all not particularly high, not particularly low. If you've got, the main significance of that is if you drink more water, obviously you will have a high, lower specific gravity because specific gravity tells you the concentration of the solutes in the urine, but you can also tell that from the color. If it's consistently low, it means you may have a problem with kidney damage because your kidneys are not efficiently reabsorbing the water. And what happens is if kidneys are injured, when they recover, they will replace the efficient kidney water reabsorbing cells with less efficient ordinary epithelium and as a result they won't absorb water and you can get a fixed low specific gravity. Another situation where you have fixed low specific gravity is where you don't secrete enough antidiuretic hormone or your kidneys don't respond enough to antidiuretic hormone. A situation which has nothing to do with the ordinary diabetes known as diabetes insipidus because it doesn't taste of anything uh, the urine, which I'll come to in a minute, and as a result, it can be a fixed low level because you're secreting too, excreting too much water. Uh, next one along ketones. Ketones are a reliable measure of diabetes because, or starvation because it's when your body starts to break down fat because it can't use sugar, either because it's not there or because the sugar is not being efficiently moved in and out of the body. So you'll get ketones. So that's a reliable indication and my ketones on here are absolutely fine. Now next one along, bilirubin. Bilirubin 
is a bile pigment in the liver and again eventually goes into producing urobilin which is the yellow stuff. So that's the next one along and finally you've got glucose. Now glu my glucose is, is obviously 5 millimoles per litre which is very low. Whereas high glucose may indicate diabetes, it doesn't necessarily indicate diabetes. It's more reliable to look at the ketones as well if you've got that concern and diabetes is actually, it actually indicates that there's a, a glucose in the bloodstream has gone above the renal threshold and it's being excreted. And that can happen for several different reasons. One of which is an overactive thyroid and another of which is a high basal metabolic rate. It doesn't necessarily mean you've got blood diabetes, although that is a very common reason for that. Okay, now I also want to talk about alternatives because this is not a resilient situation. I've had to rely on ordering this from a factory and it's not the kind of thing you can imagine always being able to sort out. Now there are certain things that can easily be sorted out. First of all, if you taste it and it tastes of, water, uh, of sugar, then that's high urine glucose. pH you can do with the, uh, the video that I've done about the uh, cabbage water, the red cabbage water and the cyanins, which is going to be here. The leukocytes, well, uh, leukocytes and infection, you usually can tell whether it's cloudy or not, and it's not cloudy there. So that's obviously not infected, although that's not particularly reliable. Gravity, you can either look at how dark it is, how light it is, but you can also use a hydrometer, which is one of the things that is used in brewing and seeing how high it floats. So a lot of those things you can actually cover without actually using one of those strips. Now, just a couple of other things. Those are the alternatives, and there are other alternatives as well. And finally, because this has been a very long video, I want to talk about the fact that on this channel, the most popular video of all, which is hidden now and currently has more than half the views, unfortunately, is the one of my wife drinking her urine on television. And I don't have anything against people who drink their urine for fun. I don't even have anything against people who drink their urine for health purposes, although I have a video on that here because I don't actually agree with it on the whole. But it's rather frustrating having that. If you like this video, please rate, comment and subscribe and share. If you dislike this video, tell me why so I can improve and I'll see you tomorrow.